In this lesson, I'll show you how to find the compression of a spring that's placed at the bottom of an incline. So the question reads, calculate the compression of the spring when the block slides down the plane. Now we've done a problem like this in the past, except this time the spring is placed along the incline as well. Whereas before, the spring was placed on the horizontal surface. So with that being said, let's begin by calculating some important things. The first thing that I want to calculate is the potential energy that this mass holds from a distance that is 4 meters. The potential energy can be calculated using this formula, where you have mass times gravity, the acceleration due to gravity, times the height. This potential energy will go into the work required to compress the spring. The work required to compress the spring can be calculated using the following, where we have work is equal to K, which represents the constant for that specific spring, and that's given in the question as 300 newtons per meter times x to the power of 2 over 2. And remember, x is what we're looking for. That's the displacement in which represents the spring's compression. Normally, springs compress linearly. And when the force is applied linearly, you use this formula instead of the typical force times displacement. So the potential energy will go into the work required to compress the spring. And there's more than just this potential energy that extends from 0 to 4. We also have to take into account the energy after the 4 meters. So after the 4 meters, we have to find the potential energy that extends this distance. Add it to this potential energy and make it equal to the work required to compress the spring. If that's confusing to you, here's what I mean. So I'll take this expression, mgh, that's the potential energy from here to here, and we'll add it to another expression that represents the potential energy from here to the bottom. Whatever that is equal to, then gets equal to the work required to compress the spring, which is found using that expression, kx squared over 2. So now we're on the lookout for the expression that represents the potential energy from this point to down here. We'll use the same formula as before, where we had mgh, except rather than using h, we will use h prime to represent another height. We don't want to confuse the reader thinking that it's the same height. So h prime. h prime can be found using some simple trigonometric functions. So think of a right triangle like that, where this angle is 40 degrees. We are looking for the distance from here to here, which will represent the displacement. And I'll call it x. And the height I'll represent as h prime. Using what I know about trigonometric functions, sine is the trigonometric function that relates the hypotenuse, which is what we're looking for. We're looking for that x in the opposite side. So I have sine 40 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is h prime over x. Multiplying both sides by x isolates h prime. And I'll take this expression and replace this h with it. So I have m times g times x times sine 40. Now I have an expression for the potential energy from here to here. Let me rewrite that so you can see it clearly. We have mgh, which represents the potential energy from the top to 4 meters, plus mgx sine 40 is equal to kx squared over 2. All we have to do now is fill this in. It's 2.5 kilograms. The acceleration due to gravity is 9.8. The height is 4, plus again 2.5, 9.8. Now normally you're supposed to write down all the units and take that into account as you're doing this, but I'll just leave it the way it is. I know my final answer will be in meters, so I don't have to worry with that. X is what I'm looking for, and sine 40 can be calculated with a calculator. Let me move this so I have room for my equation. And that's equal to K. That's given in the question as 300 newtons per meter. X is what we're looking for over 2. 
300 over 2, I can replace that with 150 just to simplify things. And as you can tell, we're dealing with a quadratic. x to the power of 2 is the highest power, so this is a quadratic. I'll take all my terms over to one side, and I'll start to calculate some stuff. So I have 2.5 times 9.8 times 4. All of this is 98. I can find out what that is. 2.5 times 9.8 times sine 40. Make sure your calculator's in degrees. And that's roughly 15.748, 748x minus 150x squared. Now you have to use the quadratic formula. Although I'm not going to waste my time writing it all down and doing it by hand. There's a software that I can easily find the roots by placing the value of a being negative 150. That's the coefficient of the x squared term, 15.748 and 98 as our constant. And we get two values. We get one value that's 0 0.86. x is equal to 0 0.86. So the spring compresses 0 0.86 meters. And another value where it compresses negative 0 0.75. That makes no sense in relation to what we're discussing here, so we will ignore that. Therefore, given the configuration shown in this illustration, this spring will compress 0 0.86 meters.